Hey everybody, what's going on? So, Toyota has finally released pricing information for the GR86. Now, as you may recall, Subaru released their pricing information earlier this year in the summer. And I think that we had all expected that Toyota would respond or follow that with their own pricing fairly soon afterwards. However, it's taken several months, but now Toyota has finally released their prices as well. And as expected, it is fairly comparable to the Subaru pricing, maybe just a little bit lower. So that's good news. Well, let's take a look at the Toyota press release. Well, as you might expect, Toyota's got a lot to say about their all new GR86 sports car. And a lot of it is stuff that we've seen before if you've been following the news about these cars. And I talked about a lot of these details in prior videos, so check those out if you haven't seen them all. But you love to hear about details that someone like me, as a BRZ owner, would notice or care about. But I will include links to all those videos below and also to the Toyota press release if you do want to read everything. Let's cut to the chase though and take a look at the pricing. Now one thing to note here is that both Subaru and Toyota like to list their MSRP without the delivery and handling charges. That's a little misleading because of course you can't buy a car without paying these delivery charges. So I have to mention that. Toyota USA charges $1,025 delivery fee on top of MSRP. So you've got to add those on top of the numbers you see here. And most of the automotive press will include those numbers when they report on what the price of a car is. Just to compare, Subaru charges $960 for their delivery fees. So I'll go ahead and present for you a table with all the pricing for both the Subaru BRZ and Toyota GR86, and we can do a real apples to apples comparison. As I mentioned before, Toyota comes out with just slightly lower pricing than Subaru. The cheapest GR86 is $28,725, and that's a $230 difference for the lowest trims between a manual transmission GR86 and a manual transmission BRZ. If you for some reason decide that you want Toyota's most affordable sports car with an automatic transmission, you'll pay an additional $1,500 for that option. That same option would cost you $1,600 at Subaru. Now let's talk about bumping up the options to the GR86 Premium trim. That's a $2,600 upgrade from the base model if you stick with the manual transmission. On the BRZ, going to the limited trim level would cost you $2,500. And if you're going all out on the automatic transmission, then for the GR86, you're shelling out $4,100 over the base model for a total of $32,825. Whereas for the BRZ, that will set you back $4,300, and your price tag gets pushed up past $33,000. So the main takeaway is the GR86 is going to be a tiny bit cheaper than the BRZ. But as you can see, the cost difference is really negligible, and you really should just get the one that you want. Okay, so let's suppose you've decided on the Toyota. Let's talk about the trim levels, and what are the differences between base and premium model. What do you get with the premium trim, and is it worth it? $2,600 is a lot of money. Now, I talked about this in regards to the Subaru BRZ Limited trim in my previous video when the BRZ pricing came out. And the GR86 Premium trim is very nearly the same things that you're getting. Let's take a look at that list. So the first thing is the duckbill rear spoiler. 
This is the one unique thing that the GR86 has to offer that I think does make the car stand out a bit from the BRZ. It's a raised duckbill spoiler on the back of the trunk lid, and I think it gives the car kind of a baby A90 Supra look that works really well with the lines of the car. So that's a plus. But let's look at the other things included in the higher trim. LED headlights with adaptive lighting. That's a solid meh from me. You might think differently if you do a lot of night driving, but I don't think that is a huge must-have feature. Next up, the 18 by 7.5 inch wheels with the Pilot Sport 4 tires. I talked about this with the BRZ Limited. I don't think this is worth getting for several reasons. One, you're still stuck with 215 width tires and 7.5 inch wide wheels, which is not particularly great. Yes, you get better Pilot Sport 4 tires, but you can buy better wheels and tires on your own. And second, I don't really like the black wheels that come on this car if you get the premium. At one point in my life, I liked black wheels, but that time has passed. And third, I already have a set of aftermarket wheels that I'd throw right on the car. So these wheels will go up for sale or get tossed in the garage. And I think that these wheels are a big part of the overall cost of the premium package. So that's kind of money down the drain in my mind. Now that last bullet point on the brakes is kind of a red herring. 11.6 inch and 11.4 inch front and rear brakes, those are available on the standard or base trim car as well. There's no difference between the base car and the premium in terms of brake size. So I don't know why that is listed here as a feature of the premium trim. Maybe it's a mistake, maybe it's something that carried over from uh, maybe the Japanese market or from one of the other countries, but in the US you're getting the same brakes regardless of which trim you buy. Okay, so then we go into the interior upgrades. And this is where I get a little disappointed with the interior of the GR86 compared to the BRZ. Yes, with the premium trim, you do get better interior and seat material. You get the suede material instead of cloth, but the silver contrast stitching on the seats and the steering wheel and everywhere else in the interior is kind of meh for me. It seems like if you want red stitching, you'll have to get the BRZ. And that's something that I'll miss if I go with the GR86. It seems like there might be an option to get certain individual parts with red stitching, but then you have this mismatched interior, some parts with red stitching and some parts with silver stitching, and it just seems not that cohesive. Whereas with the BRZ, everything just comes with red stitching. And I think that is just a better overall look. With the premium trim, you also get heated seats. So that's worth mentioning. I don't really care about that too much personally. It never gets that cold here where I live, so I don't really need the heated seats. But if you live somewhere colder, that may be something that's important to you. And one last thing to mention is that you also get eight speakers instead of six for the premium audio system. Again, that's not really a big deal for me. Last bullet point on the list, aluminum pedals and scuff plates. I'm actually a little disappointed that those aren't included in the base model. My base model BRZ comes with these aluminum sport pedals and the scuff plates, so I'm a little disappointed that you have to go up to the premium trim on the GR86 in order to get them. So, $2,600 for these items. While the interior and exterior upgrades do make the car look a bit nicer, I think I personally would pass on that option and just choose the base model GR86. The big question for me will be, can you get the duckbill spoiler or something like it separately? That's the only thing I think I'd want from the premium trim that I'd pay good money for. The rest are bells and whistles that I really can live without. 
Let me take a moment and talk about the color choices available for the GR86. Most of the colors carry over from the previous generation car. You've got black, white, silver, gray. The red and halo white will cost an additional charge. And then there's two shades of blue. There's a darker blue called Trueno blue and a brighter one called Neptune. I'm actually surprised that the Neptune Blue doesn't come at an additional cost. That is such a bold and premium looking color. I guess I didn't realize it, but that color was available on the 2020 model of the 86. It looks very similar to the Series Hyper Blue BRZ that was sold as a limited edition. It's maybe even a little bit brighter. That ought to make the Hyper Blue BRZ owners mad who had to pay extra for that color. That might be my color of choice if I get a GR86, since the World Rally Blue isn't available on the Toyota. It reminds me of the gorgeous shark blue color that is available on the Porsche GT3. Perhaps another question you've been wondering is when will the GR86 become available here in the US? Well, according to the Toyota press release, they expect the cars to start arriving in December of this year. So it won't be long now. We will hopefully be able to get a closer look at one in person soon. So breaking news, at the time of my making this video, the very first BRZs are starting to hit dealership lots in California. And one of our friends, Mike of Counterspace Garage down in Southern California, has already taken delivery of his car this week. So it's very exciting times as we are going to start seeing these cars out in the wild. And certainly in the case of Mike, he's already starting to mod the car and take it to the track. He reports that the aftermarket brake pads and coilover suspension from the prior generation BRZ should bolt right on to the new model. So that is very good news for those of us who are looking to upgrade from the first gen and are hoping to bring over some of our upgrade parts. Wheels also share the same bolt pattern, 5x100. So of course, any sets of wheels and tires you had for your first gen BRZ or 86 will move right over as well. So which car would I choose? I would say that with the pricing being so similar, it actually makes it more difficult for me to choose. I keep looking at both cars, and they both have features that I like and dislike. But I keep coming back to the GR86 for this round. For me, it comes down to the styling and the GR branding. And while it's really close, I think the GR86 front end looks slightly better than the BRZ this time around. There are a few things about the GR86 that I don't like as well. The black wheels and the black side mirrors make the car look a little bit cheaper and less upscale than the BRZ. And if I get the base model, will the cloth seats look cheap in person? Or if I spring for the premium trim, how will I feel about the interior stitching color? I really do think that the red stitching fits this kind of sports car a little bit better. But these are minor cosmetic things, and I think most of them can be changed after the fact with a little bit of modding or upgrades. So in the end, I think I would go with the GR86 and select the base model. I'm really having a hard time justifying spending that extra $2,600 for the premium trim. So that is it. Those are my thoughts on the pricing for the Toyota GR86 and how it compares to the Subaru BRZ. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Which one are you going to go for? Do you think the pricing is similar enough that it just makes a more difficult decision for you to make? Or is it clear cut for you which one you want? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks as always for watching. 
I hope you stay safe, stay healthy, and take care. I'll see you next time.